welcome to clinicalpath.com. Today's topic is vascular diseases of the kidney. This is an important clinical pathologic correlation to understand. There are no primary vascular diseases of the kidney. Rather, you should think of it is that there are systemic vascular diseases that involve the kidney. So anytime we talk about atherosclerosis of the kidney, which would be renal artery stenosis, there is systemic atherosclerosis. So these patients should also be worked up for coronary artery disease. They should have a good look at their carotid arteries. And last but not least, you should do a comparison of the blood pressure of the arm to the leg looking for iliofemoral disease. Similarly, if you were looking at someone with hyaline arterial sclerosis, which is going to give us glomerular sclerosis, you should also go looking in other organs, because in the brain you're going to see congestive heart failure, and in the head you're going to see hemorrhagic stroke. So there's no primary vascular disease of the kidney. Every time you find vascular disease in the kidney, you know it's a marker of systemic vascular disease. So let's organize the circulatory system in our mind. We think of the circulatory system as the arterial system going to our capillaries and from there onto our veins to return to the right side of the heart. When you think about the artery, you want to think about the aorta, muscular arteries, which basically are all your named arteries, and then your small arteries and arterioles, because each of these is going to have separate diseases. When we talk now about the pathology, the aorta you have to divide into the ascending aorta and the thoracoabdominal or descending aorta. These are embryologically different and they have different diseases. In the ascending aorta, we get cystic medial degeneration, so we think of hypertension and Marfan syndrome. In the descending, we're thinking of atherosclerosis. Muscular arteries, atherosclerosis. But in the small arteries and arterioles, this is hyaline arteriolosclerosis. In the capillary, we talk about filling up the basement membrane with advanced glycosylation end products, and we see those in diabetes mellitus. Otherwise, we don't talk about the capillary. And when we talk about veins, we're talking about thromboembolic disease. So we're talking about hypercoagulable states. So when we now talk about vascular disease of the kidney, we're really not going to talk about the veins because that's part of a separate discussion of thromboembolic disease. We really want to talk about arteries and capillaries. So when we talk about macrovascular, this means the muscular arteries, so that's the renal artery, and the arterioles, by which we also sort of infer there's a blend, so it includes some of the small arteries. So that's macrovascular. When we talk about microvascular, we're only talking about capillaries, and therefore we're only talking about diabetes mellitus. So let's come down and look at this table. If you can do this table, you can do all of the vascular diseases of the whole body. And you notice we're just picking off kidney. There's no primary vascular diseases of the kidney. They're all markers of a systemic disease. And so you've got to be able to do macrovascular and microvascular disease for every organ system. So you can see that we're not going to do heart, CNS, and legs, so on but obviously we'll visit them when we come to them as organ systems and when we do circulatory system. But when we talk specifically about the kidney, macrovascular artery disease of the kidney is renal artery stenosis. And the symptom is going to be resistance.